We do honor the presence of the Lord. Amen. And he's here sweetly this morning. To Pastor Terry in her absence. Amen. And help me honor and appreciate Elder Felicia Flowers for opening the service for us this morning. Bless you. To God be the glory. Amen. Because I was taught right. I waited until after you finished praying to enter the sanctuary. But my spirit did so agree with what you prayed. And we thank you for serving this morning and for setting the tone. To all who are serving in ministry, to our ushers, to include our youth ushers. Can we bless God for the two of them this morning? Those who are serving in security. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go this, I'm, I'm going to say this, van driver. Amen. Thank you for getting some people here. To God be the glory. To our musicians and to our praise team, can we bless God for them. To all who are serving in whatever capacity that you are serving. And to our members and certainly to our visitors and most importantly our first time visitors. Grace and peace be multiplied from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn with me to Luke 19, verses 28 through 40. Historically speaking, and you know me, I'll just go with the flow of the Spirit. So I didn't do this last year and probably the year before last. But historically speaking, today is Palm Sunday. Amen. Amen. And um, Luke 19, verses 29 through 40 reads this way from the New King James Version of the Bible. And it came to pass when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village opposite of you, where as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you why are you loosing it, thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to him, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they sat Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Amen. Amen. Uh, from those verses of scripture, I want to preach and teach from the subject Long live the king. Long live the king. Father, I pray that your word will have free course in this place, that it will run swiftly, do a work in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, I pray that the saints will be edified. And most importantly, that you will be glorified. And then the words of Prophet Marion Williams, that the enemy will be horrified in Jesus' name. We pray that lives will be not only touched, but changed. 
And if there's anybody in this place not saved, that you will show him or her his or her need for salvation. Bring them out of darkness into the marvelous light. And we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Long live the king. Back to verse 29. We're already there. As Jesus came to the last critical week before the crucifixion, he sent his disciples to make arrangements for his arrival in Jerusalem. And what's interesting about it is Jesus had been to Jerusalem many times before, prior to this time. But this time was different. There was something special about this journey to Jerusalem. I love the way Jesus stayed focused on his assignment. Because if we were back up to verse 28, we'll find that after he got through, uh, you know, chastising his servants, amen, in, in the power that he spoke, the Bible said when he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. The time had come. Lord, have mercy. This time was different. And so came to pass when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount, mountain called Olivet, he sent he, two of his disciples, the text says, verse 30 again tells us that he said, go into the village opposite of you where you shall enter and find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Amen. Now, it's significant that Jesus rode this particular animal into Jerusalem. If he had come on a horse, he would have been considered a conquering general. But by coming on a colt, which was customary for royalty, he came as the prince of peace. Lord, have mercy. Zechariah saw the Messiah as the prince of peace. So the donkey was what a man of peace, a, man, a merchant, or a priest would ride. I'm going to say that again. A donkey was what a man of peace, or a merchant, or a priest would ride. Are we together? It was like a low and humble type animal. Now, down through the years, Jesus' entry into Jerusalem has been described as triumphant. How many have heard people talk about uh, the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem? The question now probably becomes, how was it? triumphant what is so triumphant about Jesus entering into Jerusalem being that he had entered Jerusalem many times what's triumphant about this time I agree with Adam Clark who says that it was the triumph of humility over pride And worldly grandeur of poverty, oh, I mean, of, of worldly grandeur. Let me say that again. It was the triumph of humility over pride and worldly grandeur. It was the triumph of poverty over affluence. And it was the triumph of meekness and gentleness over rage and malice. Can I tell you that when you conduct yourself outside of the norm of this world system, 
when you do things the kingdom way, it's triumphant. When you walk in a place, not arrogant, but humble, it's triumphant. Are we together? Oh, my, 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 my. The fact that no one has ever sat on the donkey, amen, or the colt, uh, should tell us that this seat of authority is for Jesus and Jesus alone. Can I say it again? Luke takes the time to tell us that Jesus says you'll go into a village opposite of you, whereas you enter, you'll find a coat tie on which no one has ever sat. Oh, come on up in here. Are we together? And what that tells us is that uh, this seat of authority is for Jesus and Jesus alone. Now we're going to read verses 31 to 33. Uh, and if anyone asks, he says, if anybody asks, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. Are we together? By this time, Jesus had gained popularity. Mm -hmm. People had witnessed miracles take place. And at this particular time in the text, Jesus had gained popularity. So it, it was basically a key word. Lord have mercy, if you will. If anybody asks you, what, what are you doing? Because you just don't walk up to somebody's house all willy-nilly and take their coat. Are we together? He said, so if anybody asks you, all you have to say is the Lord had need of them. Isn't that awesome? That's all you got to say. You don't have to explain. You don't have to go in detail. All you have to say is that the Lord had need of him. Okay. Sounds like favor to me. <laughs> ah. All right. Yeah. God will do for you. <laughs> what he wouldn't allow to be done to somebody else on occasion. And it's not that he is a respected person, but some people just, favor just follows them. All right, verse 32. Uh, verse 30, yeah. All right, verse 32. So those who were sent went their way, found it just as he said to them. I love that. <laughs> when people give you directions, they give you instructions. And before we got all these regulation road signs, most time people say, you go three blocks up, take a right, you're going to see a building over here, and to the left, you're going to see that. And then you get there, you're going, I'm talking about this before GPS now. <laughs> and you get there, are you going the right way? Yeah, because that's that building they said we're going to be right there. That, that, that little red car over there, so we're in the right place. Okay, now, but then the opposite is true. When you don't see what has been suggested that you're supposed to see, that's what confusion sit in. But when they went their way, they found it just like Jesus has said it to them. Can I tell you that Jesus will give you specific instructions? And if you follow his instructions, you'll find it just like he said it. And if not, he ain't said it. That's all I had to say about that. I didn't know if you thought I was going to say something deep, but that's, that's that. Uh -huh. but, but I just know he said it. No, if it didn't turn out like he said it would, he didn't say it. That, is, that, that voice was either your voice or the devil. Yeah, one or the other, but the Lord ain't said it. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. But as they were loosing the coat, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the coat? I just love how specific and detailed Jesus is. Jesus never said when. Somebody asked you. He said, if. So in other words, they may ask you and they might not ask you. But if they ask you, don't get alarmed. Just say to them, why 
uh, just said to them that the Lord had need of these. So as they were loosing the coat, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the coat? Verse 34, and they said, the Lord has need of him. You see how things are falling right in place. Falling right in place. Verse 34, so uh, when they said, the Lord hath need of him. There are three things that I want to bring out of verse 34. Number one, according to the custom of that day, animals such as donkeys were made available by their owner for travels for a price or they could be borrowed. Are we together? Animals like donkeys were made available by their owner for travelers for a price or they could be borrowed. Moreover, animals such as donkeys were paid for or borrowed by the poor, stay with this, while horses were paid for or borrowed by the rich. I need for you to catch that. Now, we know that Jesus was not poor in the sense of being depleted of resources. But we do know that the way he came, uh, the Bible says he was rich, but he became poor. I wish I found that scripture for you. It's in there, though. Though he were rich, he became poor. Are we together? And, and I thought about how when he came here, he didn't, he, he didn't come in pomp and circumstance. But he was born in a trough. Uh, he was born and laid rather in a trough, in, in a manger, which is nothing but a feeding trough. Isn't that amazing how the bread of life was born in a bread box? So here we have this theme. He comes in humility. He comes lowly. Second thing I want to bring out is this. Notice the words, the Lord and had need. <laughs> he said, tell them that the Lord hath need. Notice those words. Where, where am I going with that? He is the Lord. <laughs> Are we together? But in this instance, he has need of him. We see both sides of Jesus. You know how we preach it? We say he was both human and divine. They said the Lord, that's divine. Come on up in here. Hath need, that's human. <laughs> now there is a passage where God says, if I needed anything, I wouldn't ask you. <laughs> God, God is God. He owns a, the cattle on a thousand hills. Are we together? But for all practical purposes, they said the Lord hath need of him. Lord have mercy. We see him in his deity and we see him in his humanity. And it's not like he needed it to exist or to do something supernaturally. But he needed it in order that that scripture might be fulfilled. That's where my third uh, point comes from out of that verse. It's not that Jesus had need of the coat because he, would, he, he had been traveling from Galilee to Bethany and couldn't make the last two miles. Come on. It's not like he would tie and couldn't make those last two miles. But he had need of him. So that the prophecy of Zechariah might be fulfilled. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Zechariah. Oh, that's the scripture right there that I was alluding to. Amen. God bless the media ministry. Second Corinthians 8 and 9 said, For you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Uh-huh. Might want to write that down. All right, so at any rate, Jesus, it's not like that Jesus couldn't make the last two miles. Because remember back then, they didn't have uh, F-150s. And, 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 and <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And whatever you drive. Uh, but they had to walk. 
So they traveled from Galilee to Bethany. And they, it, you know, it's not like he couldn't make the last two miles, but he had need of him so that the prophecy of Zechariah might be fulfilled. What prophecy? Zechariah 9, verse 9. Zechariah the prophet prophesies. He says, rejoice greatly. O daughter of Zion, Zechariah 9 and 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. Lowly and riding on a donkey. A colt, the foal of a donkey. Are we together? Notice Zechariah, but some people still missed it. He said, your king is coming. And I'm going to get this out of the way now. They were looking for a, 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 a national king. They were, in other words, like a political figure. Are, are we together? Who would restore them to their former glory? Who would rescue them from their Roman captivity? But Zechariah, if they paid attention to the prophecy, said, Behold, your king is coming to you. Good God Almighty. He is just, uh, he's not corrupt. Come on, somebody up in here. He's, he's just, he, he, he's righteous. And watch this, and having salvation. I came to tell you, he's a different kind of king. Are we together? He comes having salvation good god almighty lord have mercy he comes and though watch this though he is a king he's not coming according to man's expectations he's not coming in pomp and circumstance but he's lowly and riding on a donkey He's not on a horse. He's not coming to conquer. Come on, at least not in that way. But the king is coming. He's coming with salvation. Lord, have mercy. And that's what I love about it. Whenever you're born again, you're no longer uh, of this world. We're all in this world. We're on this planet. Are you listening to me? But whenever you've been born again, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. I wish I had just a few people that will celebrate the fact that you're in this world, but, but you're not of it. Come on. That praise ought to be louder than your house. That praise ought to be louder than the praise you give God for your car. That praise ought to be louder than the praise that you give them for your job. We are to bless him. That life now is sweet and my joy is complete because I'm saved. That ain't popular these days. People preaching stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm saved. Through the storms of life, my soul keeps singing. I'm saved. Hallelujah. Oh, some just hit. Your money might be low, but you're saved. Good God Almighty. Your family might have dysfunction, but you say. You might not be happy about everything that goes on in your church or on your job, but you're saved. You might not have houses or lands, but you're saved. I'd rather have Jesus. Hallelujah. Than silver and gold. Say. By his power divine. Save to new life supply. Life now is sweet. And my joy is complete. Because I'm saved. Hallelujah.
Aleluya. ¡Oh! Verses 35 and 36. Good gracious. Deliverance is coming on the donkey. It might, it might, might not come the way you think it's coming. Oh, 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 oh. Remember I said that many times he went to Jerusalem, but this time we're different. I'm t- I feel led to tell somebody that the next time you go on your job, it's going to be different. The next time you go in your house, it's going to be different. The next time you go to the doctor, I feel led to tell somebody that it's going to be different. Because your king is coming. All deliverance is coming. The next time you talk to your unsaved family, something's going to be different. Yeah! This time, when I go to Jerusalem, it's going to be different. Okay, because the time is at hand. Thirty-five. Then they brought him, him who? The colt. They brought him to Jesus. <laughs> See, God can use the humble. God can use the lowly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the lowly <laughs> might be tied up. But when Jesus has need of you, you got to be loose. I, I just, uh, stay humble. Stay humble. <laughs> Woo! And after a while, somebody will come. Come, come, come. And you'll be like, what, what? The Lord has need of you. Stay humble. Okay. Are you listening to me? <laughs> you might feel like you've been tied up on a rope somewhere. Can't go but so far. But I tell you, we're in a season where the Lord has need of you. That's why you can't die now. The Lord has need of you. That's why sickness can't prevail. The Lord has need of you. That's why you can't quit that job. The Lord had need of you. That's why he promoted you to another job because the Lord had need of you. Okay, let's try this again. Then they brought him to Jesus. And they threw their own clothes on the coat. And they sat Jesus on. Are we together? And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Just picture that now. Are we together? Their garments. Jesus is walking. No, he's not walking. He's on the donkey. He's riding. And before he get there, people just throwing their clothes in the way. Are we together? So he's, he's riding into Jerusalem because this time is a game changer. Are we together? Verse 36 tells us that uh, 
even as their clothes were on the road and, 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 and so on and so forth. And as he went, where many spread their clothes on the road. All right? Now, the, the, the idea of a victorious conquering king entering into a city was nothing new in that day. Are we together? That, that, you know, for conquering kings, and I tell you, Jesus was a different kind of king, but see, he did come to conquer, but on a different level. So the idea of a victorious conquering king entering the city, it was nothing new in that day. For instance, when a victorious king came into a city, and I need for y'all to catch this and remember this if you can, and I'll help you as much as I can. He was escorted, this king was, by the citizens of his kingdom and his army. So the citizens of the kingdom and uh, uh, members of his army escorted him into the city when he came in. As he entered, songs were sung in praise and acclamation of the conqueror. They were saying some things about that conqueror. And, and he came, watch this, and when he came, he came with symbols of his victory. Uh-huh. He came with symbols of his victory and uh, authority. Are you listening to me? Matter of fact, when a king conquered a people, they would get the leader of that people uh, and the people because they would, be, they would be subject to them. See, everybody didn't die in battle. God allowed people to conquer people so they could serve them. Are we together? And so they would get the, the head man, the leader, the king. Yeah. And they sometimes would put a ring in his nose and they would parade him through the streets of the city. Therefore, uh, showing that he had gotten himself the victory. Keep that in mind. So, uh, Lord, have mercy. So, he, uh, this king was escorted by the citizens of the kingdom. He was escorted by his army. As he entered in, songs were sung in praise and acclamation of the conqueror. He came with symbols of his victory and authority. Watch this. Lastly, the king came into the city's prominent temple and made a sacrificial offering to honor the gods and to associate himself with those gods. Uh, are we together? So, this type thing was nothing new. But whenever you, you compare and contrast, and I told you comparing, we look at similarities Contrast, we look at differences. When you compare and contrast with Jesus' entry, watch this. You still got a king coming. Yeah, according to Zechariah. Jesus entered into Jerusalem with a humble escort and singing. And the only symbols of his power were a humble donkey and palm branches. Come on up in here. Not only that, but in contrast to the other kings, Jesus didn't offer sacrifices. But what he did was he challenged the religious status quo and he cleansed the temple instead. See, if you read after this, you read that Jesus went into the temple. And he cleansed the temple. Y'all ain't studying this. He, 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 he whipped them out of the temple. They had, they had made God's house what I call an indoor flea market. They, Jesus walks up in there, overturned the tables of the money changers. And not only were they changing money, but they were cheating folk in the process. What are you talking about? They knew that foreigners were coming, especially around this time. Come on, before the Passover. People will be gathering. And so they had to literally exchange money because there were certain coins only allowed in the temple. So there were temple coins they could buy. So what they did, they, they would change their coins, but they cheat them in the process because they knew that the people that were bringing the money to be exchanged didn't know any better. 
Jesus came up in there, start overturning them tables. I know we talk about he's a God of love, and he is, but he's also a God of wrath. He went up in there, overturned the money change his table. The table where the turtle doves were so. What turtle doves? For sacrifice. Because they, they had to uh, 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 use certain animals for certain sacrifices. He came up in there turn it over. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But you made it a den of thieves. He was quoting two scriptures. One in Isaiah, the other in Jeremiah. And that, that, that made it a den of thieves. Basically, what he was saying was, you made it a, a, a place where you can come in between the times that you do your mess. Oh, it's quiet now. Are we together? And, and, and what God has to say as he said it then, so it is now. Stop looking at the church building as a place of safety in God. If you ain't in God, you ain't in his safety. He said, so don't be coming up with that mess saying, I'm all right because I'm in the house of God. He said, see what I did to Shiloh. I already prepared myself for that. I mean, you know, messes like this. When you get the parts like that, it's all right, though. Bible said in verse 45, because we fast forward. Then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying to them, it is written, my house is a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. So instead of Jesus doing like worldly kings, Going and offering sacrifices to their God's little G with a S. Uh-huh. And joining himself to them. Jesus challenged the religious status quo. And cleansed his father's house. Are we together? Now, back to the text. We're going to look at verses 37 and 38. All right, and we're almost done. We're going to verse 40. The Bible says, then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples, the whole multitude. I'm like, Jesus, you better enjoy this now. Because they're going to turn on you next week. <laughs> The whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. Why they praise him, y'all? For all the mighty works they had seen. Stop there. They, they saw him and they started blessing him, for instance, for raising Lazarus from the dead. They bless him because some knew that he opened blind eyes. They bless him because they knew that he made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk, the deaf to hear, and lepers were cleansed. They blessed him because I believe some remembered that he was the one that Isaiah was talking about. When he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor. You, you see, to set at liberty them that are bruised, opening a blinded eyes and so on and so forth. You know, which corresponded with the year of Jubilee. Are we together? So they, they began to praise him with a loud voice. Uh, for all the mighty works they have seen. I just have one question. Have you seen God do anything that only God can do? Oh, come on here. I I'm talking about man couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. The doctors couldn't do it. Your boss man or lady couldn't do it. Your husband or your wife couldn't do it. Your neighbor couldn't do it. I'm going to ask you again. Has anybody ever seen anything 
that God did. I'm talking about something you can look back on and say, God did that. They praise him with a loud voice. They praise God. They praise God <laughs> with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they have seen Jesus do. Are we together? Let's get verse 38 saying, Bless is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. This is where our subject come in. Careful study of the text reveals that when they said bless is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. If we were to uh, uh, say that another way, what they were actually saying is long live the king. Long live the king. Good God Almighty. Long live the king. Good God Almighty. Are we together? They recognize him. He is king. Long live the king. We've seen proof of the miracles. But like I said, there were others who had other expectations. But there were those who thought back on what God had done. And they praised him. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. He is the Messiah. He is the Christ of God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. Are we together? And look at verse 39. It's just like the enemy. Some of the Pharisees uh, called to him from the crowd. Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I said some of the Pharisees. Can I remember I told you the Pharisees, they were fair, I see. <laughs> they were fair in their own eyes. They, 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 they had a self-righteousness. And, 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 and they, they always worry about Jesus taking, you know, stealing their spotlight. You know, as people say, stealing their thunder. Can I tell you that both thunder and lightning belong to God? Some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Why would somebody want somebody to hush? Are we together? I'll tell you why. Because John tells us in John 12 and 19, uh, John says, the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, you see that they are accomplishing, that you are accomplishing nothing. Watch this. Look, the whole world has gone after him. See, that was the problem. He's still in the spotlight off of them. Uh, are you listening? But you know what? When you really truly kingdom minded, it doesn't matter who gets the praise as long as God gets the glory. That's when you're kingdom minded. That's when you're kingdom minded. So some of the Pharisees cried out, teacher, rebuke your disciples. And we see that the reason was, and John helps us with that, to understand in his account that, that they, the whole world is going after him. They were losing their edge. They were losing their influence. Are we together? Uh, so it is with Satan and his followers. They can't stand when we praise God. Because it shows them that we, we're not giving up. When you praise God in the midst of circumstances, the devil doesn't like that. Are we together? When you laugh instead of crying. Notice what I didn't say. I didn't say laugh to keep from crying. 
laugh to keep from crying means I really want to cry, but I just ain't. Uh Uh-uh. But when you laugh instead of crying, when you have joy, (laughs) Bible study people, (laughs) unspeakable, inexpressible, that that cannot be described. When you have Jesus' joy, that the Bible says he wants to remain so that our joy may be full. In his presence is fullness of joy. That's the kind of joy I'm talking about. When you got the joy of Jesus, the devil don't like it when you praise it. Because I tell you before, there's a difference between joy and happiness. You might not be happy about what's going on on your job, but you can go up in there with joy. Y'all ain't sudden this. You can go with joy because joy is one of the fruit of the spirit. Happiness is based on circumstances and situations. That's why you're happy sometime and not happy other time. But when you got the joy of the Lord, uh, God, listen, it's like the oil of joy God gives you for mourning. Come on up in here. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He'll give you beauty for ashes. Are we together? Now, but listen to what Jesus said. (laughs) I love the way Jesus dealt with the Pharisees. When they said, teacher, rebuke your disciples. Jesus answered and said to them, I tell you, that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. King James said, rock. And and that's how come you hear people say, I ain't going to let no rock cry out for me. Some told the truth and others lie because they still don't do nothing. (laughs) Are we together? (laughs) Now, what I want you to know is this right here, that that, that it's it's, it's nothing new (laughs) for creation to praise God. That ain't a new concept. Jesus ain't lost his mind. Are we together? And I'm going to prove it to you as we prepare to close. Psalm 148, verses 7 through 13 says, Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord There were some trees mentioned up in there. Y'all ain't studying me. For his name alone, praise team, is excellent. His glory is above the earth and the heaven. Hallelujah. Psalm 96, verses 11 and 12. And I'm out of here. Let the heavens rejoice. And let the earth be clear. Let the sea roar. And the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful. The what? The pure field. If you need a visual, the field between the church and the mission building. Let the field be joyful. And all that is in therein that is therein then shall all the trees of wood rejoice if the trees can praise him the rocks can praise him and when they said to Jesus tell him to be quiet Jesus didn't say yay I tell him he just made the observation if these don't cry If these don't praise him, the rocks will praise God. 
I wish I had some people in here that will bless the Lord just because of who he is. The king is coming. Long live the king. The king is coming. On your job, the king is coming. In your church, the king is coming. In your neighborhood, the king is coming. In your house, the king is coming. In your family, hallelujah. Long live the king. For of his kingdom, there shall be no end. That's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. In one of the accounts, in one of the accounts, they said he cried out, they cried out, Hosanna. Yeah, yeah. Blessed be the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And Hosanna, in the process of time, became associated with praise. But Hosanna in and of itself means save, Lord. We pray that the Lord will save today. Somebody don't need to go another day without Jesus. You don't need to go another day uh, without the Lord. There it is, Mark 11, 9 and 10. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out saying, this is Mark's account, Hosanna. Blesses he who comes in the name of the Lord. Are we together? Verse 10 says, Blesses the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Save Lord. Somebody needs you today. Save, Lord. Somebody's without you today. Save, Lord. In Jesus' name. If there's anybody in this place, Jesus Christ is not the Lord and Savior of your life. If you were to die now, or if Jesus were to come back now, and you are not ready to leave this earth. I encourage you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. It's really not as hard as people make it seem. It's a matter of admitting that you are a sinner. Believing that Jesus Christ is Lord and that his blood alone can cleanse you from your sins. Confessing with your mouth that he is Lord. And believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Well, Pastor, I, I, I've never seen it. True, but somebody saw him. You've never seen George Washington. But there's a record that exists that said he lived. You may have never seen Jesus, but there's a record. It's called the Bible. And not only that, you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my soul. 
He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I'm his own. And the joy that we share as we tarry right there in fellowship, one with another, none other has ever known. Why don't you come to him today? Accept him as your personal savior. He will change you today. And this, this is how awesome it is. You will have come in here a sinner and left saved. Oh, hallelujah. He can change you right now. And I tell you, it's a wonderful change. You'll be able to say a wonderful change has come over me. Why? Because if any man be in Christ Jesus, he or she is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Anybody want to be saved today? This is not the same as church membership. Some churches don't, don't distinguish between the two. They make folk think as long as you join the church and your name is written on the roll, then you're good to go. I came to tell you you're not good to go. Because we'll just write your name on the roll. What we're trying to get you to do is have the Lord to write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want to know if your name is written in the book. Because things ain't getting no better, y'all. Y'all hear me? This world is not getting any better. It's a good time to be in God. And the only way is to come through Jesus Christ. And I'm not scared to say. The devil has scared people who used to preach that Jesus is the only way to God. Now he's tricking some people. But I came to tell you, he's the only one that said, I am the way, not one of the ways. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man come to the Father but by me. I came to tell you he is the ladder that Jacob saw that extended from earth to heaven. Will you come? You're not saved, but you want to be. You want a relationship with Jesus Christ. We're going to ask that you come in Jesus' name. And we hope that you'll be able to sing this right here.